Hey guys, Colin back with this week and some more stuff. And here's old uh, Mortimer Snibblins, which you might not have seen in a while, and he's being a little playful at the moment. <laughs> he's all right. Ouch, 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 he's eating me alive. Anyway, there's Morty. <laughs> and I'm back with some more records and things here for, for you to look at. And some books. And, um, ow. <laughs> All right. Yeah, with some more stuff. And he's still being feisty. Feisty tonight. And first off, we got some records. And I haven't opened this yet. I just got it. And it's the soundtrack to the movie Singles. Now, I haven't seen this movie in a really long time. So I probably need to watch it again. But I remember it had some great music. And this is a Cameron Crowe film. And if you remember, he's also the one that did um, Almost Famous. That's one of those movies I can watch like over and over and over. I'll probably watch it at least once a month, sometimes twice that's uh, almost famous this one I've only seen it maybe twice over the years but it has some really good decent um, 90s grunge rock bands in it Alice in Chains Pearl Jam uh, Chris Cornell uh, Mother Love Bone Soundgarden Mud Honey Smashing Pumpkins Screaming Trees and it also has a bonus CD with 18 additional tracks by Chris Cornell some of some of this I've probably never heard before a lot of the same bands Blood Circus Mike McCready Paul Westerberg and that's a gatefold and we'll open that right here on camera Morty, Morty back there getting into getting into his beeswax <laughs> there we go oh not much in there to to look at but um, it is a gatefold 180 grams of vinyl oops linking the thingies and there's the the CD that came with it with 18 bonus tracks on there and that's a pretty good deal right there and next we have a soundtrack Robert De Niro's Taxi Driver this is the first time I've seen this out as a soundtrack uh, from back then they have they have like re-releases re and things but this is the original I believe and um, if you remember back in the day when the guy tried to assassinate Ronald Reagan he said that uh, his big inspiration was this movie and he was trying to uh, impress Jodie Foster who's in this movie that's her up there in a the corner <clears throat> And, and they actually, uh, I think they uh, banned this movie for some, for some years around that time period. And you uh, couldn't watch it, I guess, that I remember. <laughs> and next we have Black Sabbath, We Sold Our Soul for Rock and Roll. It's got a scary type gatefold in there. She kind of looks like she's in a coffin or something with the cross maybe some some type of vampire <laughs> now when I open this it was kind of strange because the sleeve is an REO Speedwagon sleeve <laughs> so somebody got those mixed up or something at some point or another and I had to look at the record uh, you don't usually do that at my record store but I had to look at the record just in case they had the wrong one in there and it was all good and next, I just happened to be wearing this shirt today, and I found this uh, Kraftwerk Electric Cafe. These guys are an electronic type band. Um, they remind me a lot of, the, I, don't, I don't know how to describe them, a mixture of uh, 80s synth, uh, poppy sort of Devo-ish, Gary Newman sort of but with no singing except they'll come on and speak German now and then and uh, here's another one I could remember if I already had it or not Dio Dream Evil 
And I might already have this. I'll just have to check into my stuff. And next I have some, uh, get these bottles apart here. We keep clink clinking around together down here. I'm going to show you some antique bottles here in a little bit. Now these next I'm going to show a few books and these are a bit different. These came out probably back in the early and mid 90s. They were I would say children's teenage. They were geared towards that crowd back in the 90s but I was in college. So I didn't get to read any of these but recently I've been on my other channel with the horror group and they've been saying you guys need to check these out. If you haven't already, they're kids books, but uh, they're rather fun. And I, I, I kind of read some of this, uh, but not this one here, Welcome to the Dead House. And it is pretty, uh, it's a, they're, they're easy reads. Uh, and they're kind of, they're quite fun, even though they're, uh, uh, they're geared towards kids. And if you remember, they also came out with the Goosebumps television series recently the uh, Goosebumps uh, movie with Jack Black which I have not seen yet and um, there were 62 of these in this series but this guy R.L. Stein has a lot some more books than this he did other ghost series for children uh, as well as other television things and all kinds of stuff he did but anyway I got some of these I wanted to check them out you can find these usually at your used bookstore or even um, garage sales you could probably find them for a quarter or something dollar or two at your bookstore and this one's welcome to the dead house and it says, Amanda and Josh think the old house they have has just moved into... The, Amanda and Josh think the old house they have just moved into is weird. Spooky, possibly haunted, and the town of Dark Falls is pretty strange too. But their parents don't believe them. You'll get used to it, they say. Go out and make some new friends. So Amanda and Josh do. But these new friends are not exactly what the parents had in mind because they want to be parents forever <laughs> along that line um here we have it came from beneath the sink <laughs> and the haunted mask uh, now this guy must have made a fortune off of these back in the day because there's 62 just in this series and he's probably still making a, a fortune now off of that stuff um, and I think I read somewhere where he's 73 years old now or 74. I don't know if he's still actively writing. I didn't read shirts that far. Now next, I have some more old bottles. I officially got some more old bottles. You heard them clinking around down there. So now, but I've got more than one bottle. I've started a collection. <laughs> and this one is... Uh, Lydia E. Pinkham's Medicine. I don't know if you'll be able to read that. You know, they would kind of read that there. Lydia A. Pinkham's Medicine. And this time I kind of researched them a little before coming on here and just showing you some old bottles. Now this one I looked it up. Um, Lydia Estes Pinkham, February 9th, 1819 to May 17th, 1883, was an iconic concocter and shrewd marketer of a commercially successful herbal alcoholic women's tonic meant to relieve menstrual and menopausal pains. Although Pinkham sold well to the general public, it was regarded by health experts as quackery. So, this is another one of those snake oils that they used to sell to people back in the day. I, I read about her a little bit. It said she started out mixing up her herbs and uh, alcohol together at her home and would sell them to her neighbors as uh, what it just said, uh, medicine for women. 
Uh, she would even uh, make, wrote a little book about her remedies and things, and she, and she, most of her stuff was towards, she geared it towards, aimed it towards women's issues. Um, and as you can tell by the little article, it was just quackery. Uh, they didn't really know what was in it besides mostly alcohol. <laughs> so these women probably got to feeling good because, you know, they were all soused up on the booze. <laughs> but um, this one here, it says Lydia Pinkham's Medicine. And I believe this one is sometime between 1900 and, say, 1920, somewhere in there, because it says medicine right here. The, the, the earlier ones, pre-1900, said vegetable oils or something on the side here. But they, all, the, all the bottles basically were the same sort of clear bluish, light bluish color. You might not be able to pick it up here on this camera. But um, they're still doing this stuff to this day in one, way, one form or another with all of these uh, uh, diet, med, uh, diet concoctions and things that they try to sell women even on television. You take this pill... Or you drink this liquid and you will lose weight. Um, and those to me are the same kind of stuff as this. They're snake oils and they're trying to just make a buck off of you. And it doesn't just go for that. It's for anything. It's a uh, car salesman. Another example, uh, the guy working at the, the, the new car lot or whatever. Um, He's trying to sell you a vehicle in one way or whether he likes, believes it himself or not, he's trying to get you to buy that car so that he can make his commission. That's how he gets paid. So he's going to tell you whatever you want to hear to get the car usually and other, all kinds of other stuff going, sneaky ways to get your money, um, taxes, another thing. Anyways, that's that bottle. Next I have... Edison's Battery Oil, made in USA, Thomas A. Edison, uh, Incorporated, Bloomfield, New Jersey, USA. Again, you might not be able to see that writing on this weird camera I got. And it says Thomas Edison in cursive on the back. And this one I looked, there's a bunch of stuff just on this little bottle also. And this says, used by railroads in battery-operated crossing guards. After refilling the con containers in the batteries, the worker would frequently just toss the bottles, which is why most are found near railroad crossings. Now, I tried to research this a little bit, not a bunch. Apparently, you know, uh, back in the day, the, the railroad lights and the, I don't know if they had one of those back then, the guard thing, uh, there would be this little container, which was supposed to be like a liquid battery, sort of, with all these different ingredients in it. And they would pour this stuff on the top, which somehow that produced so many volts for the lights to work or whatever they were trying to do at the railroad. And like it said, they would pour it in there and then just throw it, just like we do now with the plastic bottles and crap that's polluting the earth. Um, that's another story. But both of these bottles are, um, and this is like around 19, uh, if I remember right, 1915, 1915, somewhere in there. Uh, because you can research by what it says on this bottle and all of that. But both of these, this one I'm not too sure if it's really common or not, but it says you can get these for about a dollar, but between a dollar and five dollars. And I got this one for four bucks. And this one's about the same because they sold a lot of these back then and they're pretty common. I think I seen three of these at the antique store when I was over there and I just grabbed one. Kind of, I kind of looked it up on my phone to see what it was this time. And I noticed it said it was quackery, so I'm going to start collecting the medical quackery bottles, I guess. Uh, this is like uh, five bucks, four or five bucks. 
and that's just another thing I'm diving off into adding to all this stuff this glorious mountain of stuff around me and that's the video and uh, I'll talk to you guys next week thanks for watching uh, leave some comments below subscribe if you're not already subscribed and Colin over and out and weirdos unite Morty, this thing. <laughs> I need to get a mouse because every time I try to click on this button on there, it doesn't work. Say bye, Morty. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bam. <laughs>